Okay, my wonderful, wonderful, outstanding friends. This is the Secretary of Energy, and this is uh, Jennifer Graham, and she's talking about clean hydrogen as a good source of energy to try to clean up the environment and help society, and I, I applaud her for that. However, there is a bit of an issue with clean hydrogen, and I think we have a better way. Let me just explain quickly. Okay, this that was the Department of Energy. Now, they run a Fermilab, or at least fund them, and Fermilab is looking for muons and electron showers. And they say if they can get that, they can increase the potential of, of the energy 200 times. And I have done that. These are the muon, the little black balls, and this white shower is the electron showers. Now, how did we create that? Here's how I did it. Very simply, we took a red pulsed laser, we accelerated it using a Venturi. It works quite well. And these are the particles that show up just prior to exploding and actually dividing the black and the white. So what we did was we created this exact situation where we have muons broken off from the electron neutrino, separated. When they come back together, this is an explosive value that is almost incalculable. Just look at the increase in energy. This is the particle, and you would never even see that until it started to concuss at the Venturi. Then you have this literally atomic explosion, because here the light divides. That's called fission. Here it comes back together. That's called fusion. We created atomic energy on a desktop for literally for almost nothing whatsoever. Now, I've been talking about housing and something like this, where you could carry this around, literally empower a house or a car or a bus or anything. And th there's so much area in here to harvest. It's unbelievable. And, and I showed you this ball. It looks like a big, tiny, a big ball. It's No, it's tiny. This is, we're, this is light. This is extremely magnified. It, all we need to do is to be able to get around this area right here, which is extremely magnified. So we could be literally down into the size of something like this. All right. <laughs> it would surround the impact zone, maybe a little bit bigger. Who knows? At this size, that's fine. Who cares? If, you can, if you're getting enough energy back out of it, that's what you need. Whatever you need, you need. But if it would be wonderful to have something in this size of a box you just carry around, put on a counter and start working. No grid, no nothing. Plug anything you want into it. Any device you want. You have a little harness in here that could tr transfer any kind of energy you want. A couple little switches that select what voltage, you, you know, um, what cycles per second, AC, DC, anything you want. That's electricity, my friend. And I think we should be looking into this a little deeper. The money spent is not being spent wisely, in my opinion. Not when you can see this and then turn away from it, from the people that are looking to try to get this energy. I would give it another look if I was you at the Department of Energy or Fermilab and all of them. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to turn it over to anybody. I don't, I don't care who, any government, it's, because it's, uh, our government doesn't seem to be interested. So if some other government wants to talk to me, I'm 100% ready. I see no, I see nothing hidden here. It's just as simple as can possibly be. And I don't care who does it, but we need it for the world. I don't want somebody to get filthy, stinking rich. That's, that's not my motive. I want people to get comfortable and be able to stay in their own countries, grow their own food, clean up their water, clean up their air. Try to fix the world and make people a little more comfy. Okay, I've been showing this right along, and I put dollar signs act now because I'm telling you right now, this is brand new. Somebody gets in early, they're going to make some money. I don't want any money myself, but I want this done. Now, these are the transition metals. I was thinking, yeah, maybe you just make a little plate. No, better th is this, where we have a globe, an actual round cylinder with a tiny little hole for the laser to come in, and then the venturi right after the hole, and then just a pick up on the entire explosion. So really what you would have is something similar to this, and it would be like this, boom, coming in. And inside this would be completely loaded with transition metals that could absorb all of these deep electron impacts. And then 
some kind of a substrate on the outside to harvest that electricity, maybe copper. I don't know what. This is it needs engineering. It needs a little engineering. It's not a big deal though. I, I can see there's no question whatsoever. We've increased the value of this potential energy just astronomically. Out here you would never see how dark it is here, see how black it is over there? That's all you'd see. That's all you would never even see this if it wasn't for the venturi. And that's so now you can see it's starting to accelerate, it's starting to grow in energy, and then it just explodes. Fission, fusion, cold fusion, the holy grail of energy sitting right on a desktop in front of you. Okay, I think this is the easy way to do it. I, I put this video up the other day showing the new light bulbs, and you see how they have these little LED chips, these little little boxes here what they do is they emit a hell of a lot of light and they do it because you put electricity into this CMOS which is complementary metal oxide silica and it gives out a ton of light well if you put light into it it gives off electricity it works exactly backwards and I'm going to explain it right here let me just play this and I'll try to be quiet but I'll cut it I'm sure <laughs> I'm going to prove that we can get electricity out of here by shining light on it. And the more light we shine, the more electricity we get out. Well, first of all, I turn on my meter. Now, what am I looking at here? DC volts. Now, when I put these together, that's a dead short. We have no voltage at all. Nothing. Zero. Now, I am going to read across one of, this, of the CMOS. Look at that. We're going to have some kind of a reading. Look at that, 0.118 volts. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to try to keep this together. This is hard to do when I only have two hands. I lost my third one a while back. Tragic oh, accident. Let me get in here. Nah, that's the way to do it. All right, there we go. Now, there's 0.98 volts. If I completely surround this and stop the light, see that? I could keep it, you know, right down to almost nothing. There it is, zero. If I open it back up and some light hit, if, if the light obviously hits against that little chip, it's going to force electrons to come out the other side. And that's what I'm reading here. It's, it's good. Now, if I take this, which is pretty powerful, and I shine it on it, what should happen? Well, the damn thing should go way up. Now, we only got 0.08 volts right now. That's just very, almost nothing. However, when we hit it with this, we got a half a volt. We got over a half a volt, 0.5 volts. I take it away and it goes back down to almost nothing. I hit it with high power and it comes back up. Now that's a half a volt. Now what, what we have discovered is that we can increase the power of the input radiation 200 times by putting it through a very, very simple non, you know, it didn't take anything to do whatsoever, it's just a venturi, and it will increase the velocity and it will split the particles and give us nuclear fusion, literally. That's a half a volt in this tiny little space. Now that's a half a volt with just light. What we are going to be using is muons, totally different, a bazillion times more intense. Now I go on and on, I'm sure I run my mouth forever here talking about this, but let's come out to where we have the bazillions of power. This is light, which is just a pulsed red laser, and it would never get more excited. We just see this kind of a glow. But then we put it through the Venturi, and it actually separated the particles. And when we hit this stuff with this kind of radiation, we're going to have electrons coming out of our ears. Now, let's come out to a little further out here. Okay, here's where I'm showing the device that I say can capture this. Now, I have a whole new setup of this. It has to be in a ball shape and we'll shoot it into the ball because it's so explosive and I'll show you. Now, I have a whole new idea how to do this and it's just a thin, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, now, this is the laser, simple as this, this is the laser we use, that's it. Dip, 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 dip. And it shoot pulses and because of the pulses and the, the um, Venturi, we were able to separate the two parts of light and people never knew light had two parts, but it does. It has a dark side and has a white side. 
I mean, and I can show that too. I, I mean, I do. I show all this stuff here. And here, of course, is the explosion. The dark stuff never gets through, only the white. And that's exactly what CERN wants to see. And we could put all this stuff in a shoebox like this and plug plugs right into it and walk out in the woods with it. And that'd be it. You know, no grid, no nothing. 50 cycles, 60 cycles, 120 volts, 240 volts, AC, DC, whatever you want come out of here. you got electricity. You run power, you can run lights, you can run heating, air conditioning, water pumps, air filtration, oxygenators, anything you want. I'm sure I showed you this, but I've been interrupted a couple times, so let's just go one last time. That is red laser light pulse. Bip, 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 bip. It's exciting all of the electrons that are in the atmosphere because everything has electrons. These are all gases. That's the, the particle which is in the front here, which has a magnetic field around it, creates a wave, but it's a particle. So that's your particle wave duality. This is, and here is the particle, just so we're not forgetting anything. That's a particle. And it's back-to-back -back dipoles. And each one of these is an electron. Two together make a photon. Photons bounce off of you. Electrons, if there was only one, that's static, lightning, electricity. It's very aggressive. It will burn you. The two together don't want to fuse into anything, so they bounce. And then it depends on how hard they bounce back, what you see as far as light comes. Now, this is the acceleration this is literally nuclear energy right here. This is, this is a fission right here and fusion right there. You see this? Now my new structure is going to be completely surround this right into the energy levels here. So the laser will come in and we'll pull all of that through a thin film layer that, like a ball, like a, a round ball wrapped all around there. And it's all coated with this transition metal elements. And they'll just absorb all of that electrons. And I think they're just raw electrons at this point because the black part's gone. That's the dark matter. That's the muon. So I'm saying we're going to get literally raw electrons. And I, I, they've got to be extremely powerful compared to what we had here. Because you wouldn't even see this if it wasn't for the Venturi. All you would see is darkness. You wouldn't see anything until it hit something. And the only reason you're seeing this is because it's radiating backwards. Now, again, light, light accelerated, particles. That tells you that Einstein wasn't right. That tells you that the particle makes a wave and the particle can split. And here's when the particle splits right there and then it comes back together. This is cold fusion. We added no extra energy other than the, the laser which is runs on like a 9 volt battery and takes, I don't know, a couple of watts. I don't know what it takes to run that, but not much. And here's what we got out of it. We got the muons and the electron showers. Muons, electron showers. Fusion, fission. Now, I think this is worth investigating, and I've been shut off from everywhere. Don Lincoln from Fermi Lab says, go away, you're not peer-reviewed. I don't care if I'm peer-reviewed or not. If this is working, it's something that should be looked at, it should be looked at, Don. And that's all I'm asking, my friend. And I, and I want to be friends with everybody, but I'm, I'm, the stone walls that I'm hitting, I'm very, very upset, to be perfectly honest with you. I did a lot of research here, and I go back Many, many, many years. I didn't just start with this yesterday. I understood this a bazillion years ago, that there was nothing but dipoles. So this is not something new for me. And actually, back, this goes back 40 years ago. You see this? That's a, a photo receiver right there. You see it right there? Let me show you what this is. This was a timing disk that we developed for printing calculators. There was a, a, a slotted disk that spun through this little gap. This is a light emitting diode. Electricity was on there all the time and it was a little red diode. And when the strobe disk went through there, oops, it would turn on the photoreceiver. And that's all it is, CMOS. We had field effect transistors, and I believe you they would call that a field effect transistor. It's just a light emitting diode, and this is a photoreceiver. And MOSFETs were um, metal oxide silicon field effect transistors. We use a lot of those too, where a magnet would come by and pulse the transistor to, you know, the, the, the semiconductor to turn the transistor on and off. 
So I go back a long ways with this. I was I was a field engineer. I did this is what I did my whole life. So this is not something new to me. And this is very upsetting to see our scientific community turn their back on something that is pretty damn looks good to me. And I and I could talk with anybody about this stuff. I, I'm not I'm not an idiot here. You know, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. And what I'm seeing, I understand. Everybody knows that the the Bohr model's done. Toast. Never did work in the first place. Everything has to be a dipole. And this is all that exists is electrons. And they know that they can break the particles down to these two particles, muon and electron. They know it. They just don't know how to do it. I showed them how to do it. And that's all there is. Because if you can break a gigantic proton, proton down into these tiniest little particles, obviously they're the tiniest little particles. And they happen to be electrons. And when you pull a whole batch of these little magnetic, they're little bar magnets, that's all they are. And they're little balls when you put them together as a ball. And then they turn into round balls of, of um, atoms, nucleuses, molecules. All right, so I would love to have some engagement with the Department of Energy, Fermi Lab, any of them. I can be very respectful, but I'm telling you, I've lost faith in... in um, in our leaders, that uh, the the scientific people that we always consider the ones looking for solutions, I think that I I, I don't want to get a, a offensive about anything, but I think we need to look at this. Just please, that's all I'm asking. It's no big deal here. If you could spend billions of dollars for 20 years at Fermi Lab and have no results whatsoever, just take a look at this. In, in a week, you could know one way or the other if this is working. That is that simple. That's the key. It's the simplicity of it makes it absolutely fabulous. It's elegant. 